Hello everybody, I'm Clayton. And I'm Darren. And this is another episode of Gone Kayaking, a day that started like this but very quickly turned to this. It was most unexpected and fun and so we've made a video about it. The whole day was due to be a trip from Leap through to Cows, lovely and calm, very light wind and uh, it was all planned almost perfectly, wasn't it? <laughs> Near enough. Yeah, it was, um, we followed the compass across on 150 degrees and Tide was doing the rest of the work to take us into cows. Um, quick coffee and a slab of, of bread pudding in cows and then turned around to head back. And not only that, you've gone without me again! Taken Rossa and taken Vanessa and not me. Thanks. Well, you need to sort that, not me. <laughs> this is true. But even so, it did, it did produce as probably the most unexpected event of all of the kayaking trips so far, didn't it? Yeah, I was expecting some turbulence where we, where we found it, but you'll see shortly how it actually came about. Um, it turned out to be a little bit more turbulence than we really anticipated, but it was, it was more quite interesting and quite spectacular to see, really, rather than a big risk. And yet, once again, you, once you get out into the Solent, that lovely glass start soon changes, doesn't it, when you get out into the currents and the tides and everything else that's going on, which makes it such a unique area to kayak in. Absolutely. And where we were crossing, you're starting to see the effects, really, of the, the entrance, ex exit for um, Southampton Water. And you have the Medina River where it all meets the Solent. So you do see some interesting effects and slack tides and tide flows can be quite difficult to predict. Going past Captain Chris's fancy woman, and if you want to know more about that, you need to check out our other episodes. For now, though, back to the action, getting into and coming up the Medina into cows. Now it looks pretty grim. Well, I say grim, but it's it's very dull and grey. Weather-wise, we can see that it doesn't look great. But what was it like temperature-wise? Temperature was fine. Would have been in the teens. Uh, it was the, the grey is actually a benefit from the point of view we don't get the sea breeze come up. Um, this is quite a wide crossing across open water, so we didn't really want to see breeze. We wanted good, predictable light winds, which is what you got. And a little stop in cows for was this for the coffee? This was for the coffee. Nice. It was in a glass, but we um, saved you and didn't yeah. film it this time, as you can see, slippery tastic. Yeah, you've got to be careful with that, um, with that um, very slippery causeway. Yeah, people, okay, if you're having a coffee, it's in a mug with a handle. Unless you can find it in a glass, of course, that's way better. No, definitely not. Right, and you mind your footwork. Try not to fall over. Yeah, I was working on it. Managed to stay up. Nice. Corny shot, red funnel, three boats. Coffee over, heading back. All looking good, but you spotted something important. See this guy here, this is one of the ones we were talking about. I mean, he'll, he'll go through before we get there, but halfway across, he's going to look like he's going straight up. And what you were talking about, and you'd been mentioning, was that great big container ship. Exactly that. I'd been talking on the way across, um, I guess prepping the our crew for the day that this could happen because we will be passing within what looks to be the firing line of that shipping lane but we are actually outside it and we're outside the restricted area around it which we'll look at later on the maps. Well it's getting closer. Dun, 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 dun. Did it feel like that? <laughs> Not really, I wasn't too worried about him, I was more concerned with this clown in the yacht actually, he's under power and he's He's aware we were there, or certainly his crew were, but the guy steering came right up close. Lovely. Yeah, it's not always helpful. I mean, the, um, the the camera is very wide angle, so it makes things look further away than it is, but you can see it was probably about four or five feet off our nose. Well, exactly. That um, wave coming off of him there was, was on you within a second. Exactly. It's, it's not really helpful. No, and this is where things starting to get that little bit more interesting. And the reason, there's a, there's a really good reason why this was the case, wasn't it? Why it looked, as you said, he was going to be heading straight for you, but wasn't. Because it can only go in a certain way into into the port. Indeed, he needs to get past the, the, the shingle bank there as he turns into the entrance to Southampton. So where where we were it looks as though we're in line with him but we knew he was going to be making this turn across and there's actually a harbour pilot boat had come across and cleared the area of anyone that was in any sort of conflicting path 
So him going around the shingle bank meant effectively full on handbrake turn, pull the steering wheel to the right and get that back end round. That's pretty much exactly what he was doing. So he's, he's probably got a rudder the size of a house and uh, an enormous propeller that's, that's churning all this up. So the result being, as we crossed the wake, we actually got into this turbulence, um, which was actually more eye-catching than the wake itself. And we can see highlighted here, this whirlpool was creeping towards us slowly, I guess with the tidal drift and his weight dissipating, but it also, uh, it was about 30 feet round, a very clear depression in the water. It's a slightly bigger than the whirlpool you get in the bathtub. Now, for somebody new to kayaking, obviously Rosa and, and uh, Nessie had never seen anything like this. You had warned them about, it, about the fact that the container could look like it was getting close, but per perhaps not that whirlpool effect. What, needs, you know, what do you need to be aware of in that situation? Can you just paddle straight through it? Pretty much we did, actually. We, we turned nose into the wake, which makes us much more stable as we come towards any sort of turbulence off that. But um, the, the whirlpool effect was probably more than I've seen previously. Previous love crossed the wake of some of these big ships in the Solent, but not where they're actually making this fairly radical manoeuvre for such a large ship. So rather than just having the waves, you've got this extra turbulence that I guess has come off the rudder and the stern of the boat as he's making that turn. So being a caring soul, I had to just check with Rosa if uh, she had any sort of a código marrón. So it clearly left an impression on her. It was nice to know you care. Yeah, code brain is always uh, something you want to try and avoid where you can, especially if you're in a dry suit. So yeah, coming back again now, we've we've overcome the, the yacht coming close, we've gone past the container ship and now we've got the, the speed boats that think you're a race marker. But does give some nice swell as a result and we can do some slow-mo. And now, very nearly home. Indeed, this is now the Cardinal Boy off Leap Ledge, so it's pretty much back at the car park at this point. All in all, three hours, if you look at it uh, from paddle to paddle, from end to end, 45 minutes or so to get out, hour for coffee, 45 minutes or so coming back, 10 kilometres, nice little morning paddle. Indeed, and we'll see if we can retain our dignity as we get out of our boats. Top tip for the beginners, this is where you put your paddle so that you can get out of the boat without it uh, going flying and you getting wet. Vanessa's almost trying to get it to work. <laughs> and she needs a little bit of help from Rossa. A little bit. And now it's time for a diagram. Tell us about it, Darren. What's going on? Lots of things. The green is where the container ship was going. We can see where he makes his sharp turn around the Bramble's Bank. And our first sighting of him was while we were still inside the river and cows. We were following the bearing on the way back, which was around 320 degrees, which is the red arrow, and the black arrows, what the tide was doing. So that pushed us on to the track that takes us straight back to Leap, which is the yellow arrow. So we were actually physically where the yellow arrow is, which is just outside the restricted area for anyone that wants to, <laughs> to challenge where we actually were. We were outside the restricted area. Staying safe and uh, observing all of the rules and regulations that you should observe when going out in the Solent. Most definitely. And in terms of the planning for this, um, it was about, it was the weather, wasn't it? It predominantly made it a good day for going kayaking. The weather was a huge part of it because we wanted predictable light winds. And like I say, as you go across this wide area of open water, there's a lot of conflicting currents from the various sources, so it can get rough without much encouragement. But the other key part really was actually coming up with the compass bearing to follow in the first instance. So we followed 150 degrees on the way out, which took us to Cowes, and we followed the 320, which actually took us back to Leap. And you can see the difference between where we were physically and where that bearing took us on this diagram on the return leg. 
that's it from this episode of Garn Kayaking. We do hope that you have enjoyed it and please have fun in the water. Stay safe out there. Also, feel free to like, share and subscribe. From me, Clayton. And me, Darren. We'll catch you again soon. It was all over in about 15, 20 seconds, so it's it's not... Uh, that, the title of your sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> Zero, <laughs> <dear>. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, that's it!